I mean, when we did that, the nightclub, nightclub scene. Oh, we had, what were this with? It was just all friends who aren't, weren't used to our working environment, mm -hmm. being in, in our, on the job with us, if mm -hmm. you like. Mm -hmm. It just felt a bit, Messy. yeah. I remember having that panic attack. Did you? Oh yeah, yeah. And on my own in the toilet. I didn't I? even know that. <laughs> yeah, child. but I was, I was very young. I couldn't really read the boys, you know, the, the punky friends, or whether yes. they shoom lot, or yeah. I didn't know, I know them. Yes. And all gentle and gorge and fantastic they are. Yeah. But the time I was a bit sort of nervous. I was, um, the whole process of Helen Putin, I was anxious. Something like this scene in Lee's um, flat was really just people were saying what they would normally say. Um, Charlie might have been given some direction, but on the whole, it was really, we had the bones of what the structure of, of what would happen on camera was, but really the dialogue was just what people had to said. say. <laughs> yeah. Kind of way, way But even worked. the way we used to speak then was mm. different to how, that kind of going up at the mm. end of each sentence. Oh yes, which, that was a Lee's, wasn't yeah. it? I remember, I was on steroids because I had a, I'd you, hurt my knee. During all this? And I had loads of energy. <laughs> you had loads of energy? Yeah. What I noticed about this, when you and Lee are doing your talking... Do, is, do, the singing? No, the, talk, the dialogue. Oh yes, the beginning. You'd done it so many times that you were doing it in quite a... Camp? Yeah. Outrageous, over-the-top yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the first thing the that we first did we together. Did. This is parts, is that parts one yeah, to four? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. This is when I first, this is the first dance I did with Michael. Parts one to four, which I had to learn, and Gabby. And we went on tour, we did a GLA tour, didn't we, all over the country? Yes. I remember leaving the stage at Jackson's Lane and being in the dressing room, looking through the keyhole, and you and Gabby didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> Often the case. <laughs> what, choreographing? Yeah. yeah. Often the case. <laughs> yeah. But we? you could get away with it in them days, really. So sometimes with Gabby, I'd be this side of the camera doing the dance for her to copy. Mm. <laughs> that was my audition piece with Michael Clark Company, was doing um, sections from this ballet when we first met. <laughs> to me, did take you back? How did you feel nostalgic? And, and I, it didn't have that initial effect on me. I thought, well, as I, when I saw them on the big screen, not having seen them for a few years, it was incredibly emotional. Cried, I couldn't answer questions, but this is, this is such a different, to me, it's all like day before yesterday. I mean, the reason that I don't do interviews in relation to the show is because I like the way to speak for itself and I think it has to be left to speak for itself. And if it doesn't speak for itself, it's failed. It feels like a good place to be moving on from. Um, I, I, I actually like myself right now. Um, wow. it's, it's interesting to look at what we've done in the past, but I'm kind of excited about the future. Brilliant. Yeah. This was a piece that was commissioned by the, um, the Holland Festival, Edinburgh Festival and Sadler's Wells. And um, it was at the it was at, was it the Tercentenary of, of Mary and William. Um, That's Orange, William of Orange. Yeah, yeah. So they wanted something based on that, which is not really something that I did mm. generally, was something like being told what the subject matter do. was. But once again, with the fall, 
I really let them do what they were interested in doing. Well, Mark, I mean, it was strange because at the time Mark would send me like recordings of him like banging the kitchen table singing. When we got on stage and the music was for real, it was so much bigger and full. It was kind of a shock to me. I don't know about you, mm -mm. but in, in Holland, I was kind of a bit like. In about. Holland, yes. Because all the things I've been, we've been rehearsing to were just like him, like banging, yeah. kitchen table. <laughs> to me, with hindsight, it's, it's excessive in terms of sets and costumes mm. in a way that we couldn't afford later or before. Um, but we've been I've been working towards doing some of the, something with the full live for, for years because the, at the time, the Musicians Union wouldn't let me use recorded music. They, they said that the music had to be live. Interesting. Yeah, so kind of, um, I've been struggling to, to be able to make it financially possible to do something with a fool, and this was this was the outcome. I mean, if you think this is '88, mm. new period since '84, it's like four years, like four years to get be in a position to be able to do that. But by the time we did this, I mean, Mark had somebody who would knock on his door and say, "You're on stage now," and people they had a lot of employees. Too, but yes, what, to look way, after them. Yeah. Yes. In a way like, that, and they weren't used to that kind yeah. of professionalism. Yeah, but kind of, I'm just trying to say that we were sort of slightly spoiled Very at spoiled, this point. Yeah. <laughs> but look at the bait bean tins, look at the sets and everything. Yeah, which is something that I, we couldn't do again because you, mm -mm. to tour with all this stuff is just too costly. This is I Am Curious Orange. The title came from, uh, from Mark Smith when I said to him on the phone that we were going to do something about William and Mary. He immediately said, Let's, let's call it I Am Curious Orange, which is a, which is Films, a, a reference to the film I Am Curious Yellow, I Am mm. Curious Blue, which I think was kind of s considered pornographic at the time. Mm. It was about sex. Was it Sweden? So it was Ben in Sweden, and it was a reference to the, to the Swedish flag. I like that one where you're a snowflake. Yeah, this is a brilliant, this is the best picture. Love. Yeah, I mean, I, I like, there are ones that, that clearly came from me, which are those. Yeah. These big ones are fabulous for size. Yes. I love. I like the, just the audacity <laughs> of, of calling Bowie, um, oh, doing all Lou these. Reed and Iggy Pop, the Michael Clark company. Just paying homage to them. I write everything down. You wrote everything down. In order to remember it. But by the time I've written it down, I remember it anyway, if you know what I mean. But I write it down, and I could make a whole new dance based on these notes because I can't remember what they mean anymore. I mean, they don't mean anything to anybody else, do they? Well, this probably says triplet left, right, left, retire, right, parallel, down, right, up. Right, down, arm, parallel, lunge. I mean, you can make a whole new dance out of it. I write it down in order to remember it, but I mm. don't need it. Mm -mm. And by the time I've written it down, I've done it so many times on my own. But that was what's good about you. You went away and you, you choreographed on your own and then you, you put it on the dancers. And I, as a choreographer, I could never do that. But I'd like to have them there as instruments so I could choreograph on them and then see which I didn't like. But yeah. that was incredible about you, I found. You would go away and then you know exactly what you wanted. You know exactly where people were positioned on the stage. But that was just about efficiency of time I for know, me. it was amazing. So in the evening I'd work on my own mm. to work out what we are going to do the next day. Mm. Is he very grumpy with you? Well, it depends what he's been doing the night before. <laughs> he can be grumpy then. Oh, you've no idea, Muriel. 
<laughs> some of the things we have to put up with. I say to Michael, I said, Michael, don't yell at me. I want the show to be a success. I want to do the best for it. I want the show to be popular. I said, screaming's not going to achieve anything. And who wrote you tears. I, absolutely, there's tears. It's so fraught. It's completely uncalled for, I would have You thought. said it. The cloak you did for McQueen. Do you remember the queen, that linked cloak? Yes. All the dancers linked, and it made a long cloak. He didn't use it. But you didn't use it. Oh, didn't I? You didn't use it. I mean, Michael, that's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Yeah. He did this cloak where the dancers were linked onto one dancer and ingeniously linked them to each other, staggered, so it fanned out of just human bodies in a cloak. And as much as I tried to think of it, yeah. to how you did it, I can't. But I remember being just so, so overwhelmed by its brilliance. But you and also Lee, used to, the encouragement you gave me when you saw something that you liked was really it was spelled, invaluable it was to me. amazing. Yeah. You've got to do that again sometime, yeah. if you can remember, because that is extraordinary. A lot of dancers, you know, sit around the studio just waiting to be used. Mm -mm. You know, waiting to be, they're just bodies. Um, a bit like, you know, somebody described it, a writer described it as like, you've got the dictionary and you've got to rearrange the words and the words mm. are sitting around all smoking, waiting for you to use them. Mm. Like something like you mm. or Lee, who's got enthusiasm and passion, mm. Mm. really inspired but me. But it was being inspired. Yeah. I mean, you inspired us to see, yeah. to take us to some other level where we'd never been before. This is a painting by Silke Otoknap and this, to me, is clearly, um, from Lenos by, by Nijinsky's sister, sister. Nijinska, who was meant to be the chosen maiden in his right of spring, but she got pregnant, so she couldn't be it. That's definitely a piece of mind. That's Michael's, I that's quite that. obviously one of Michael's pieces. I recognise it vividly. Yeah, that's like the end of a piece that I did where there's a whole line of people. This is like very different arms and legs This is like out. German expressionism. That looks this. like Lenos. That's all Lenos yeah. by Nijinska. Oh, is it? I think the wallpaper is called Tits in Space. It's by Sarah Lucas. I'm not the artist, that is me. I am the subject. That's me sitting on the toilet. So that's because we must. Just seen briefly, suddenly went up the ladder and came down again. It's a reference to Jacob's ladder. That is, um, that's my version of Lenos. I do. Mm -hmm. That I think was Venus and Furs, probably. Venus and Furs? No, it wasn't. Like, it was one version of Venus and Furs. It was also the thing of oh, Tate Modern, yeah. Cosmic Dancer. Lovely Cosmic Dancer. It's the beautiful costume done by Body Map, worn by Michael. Matthew Hawkins, Julie Hood, and Ellen Van Schulenberch, and they did a, a pas de quatre, two. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cosmic dancer by T Rex, which became something of a signature piece. Um, some of the lyrics are I dance myself out of the womb, I dance myself into the tomb, and it seemed appropriate. <laughs> I was dancing when I was out. I was dancing when I was out. I danced myself right out the womb. I danced myself right out the womb. I did a, I did a version where my mum was on the floor and I was dragged out from between her legs by Lee Bowery. Oh, God. So I was kind of birthed on stage. Um, it needs yeah. to be revived, that one, if you can. Yeah, but Bessie and Lee are dead. <laughs> no, not Bessie and Lee, but just the four, four of your regular dancers. They'd do it lovely. Yeah. Well, it was also lucky for us because we're here every day seeing 
um, the show in part of it helps a lot. And you know, we're in rehearsals, and so we'll think, well, something gorge and wafty and flowing would work very well in that section, or something angular and sharp and cumbersome would work well in another section. So, being part of the sort of, you know, the sort of making process of the show mm. makes it a lot easier for us. That's something that Les would have worn, maybe not his particular costume, but. Um, oh yes, it was done with um, the Scottish piece. Yes. He wore Scottish. shoulder pants. The Scottish section of because we must. Because we must, and we had yeah. these huge foam shoulder pants. I remember the step. Mm, mm, that's mm, kind of, you mm. see in the back and the front at the same time, but that's something, to me, I, des I designed that. It's kind of like, it feels like it's related to Goody, uh, Rudy Garner. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Yes. This is from... Um, Mm, which is at King's Cross. I mentioned that Lee insisted on second-hand T-shirts. Yeah, Lee wanted... Uh, he didn't want new T-shirts, he wanted used T-shirts, which I think was kind of ahead of his time. Um, I guess you'd call it distressed or vintage now. I remember it was being very particular about the different typefaces and the words that were on the back and front. Well, words are very specific. I mean, movement is too, but in a different sort of way. But um, one of the things I love about costumes one of the things I love about clothes is that they're very expressive. And I think that when I started making my own work, people were denying that in terms of dance. Yes, and it should dance be concentrating costumes. at the dance, they probably thought, you know. It was you know, stripped so down, it was like yeah. practice clothes. And I felt coming from punk, probably, where you close, some, for some people, it was the only means of expression, was mm. what they wore. So it seemed like an important part of, of a visual language to use your body and your clothes to say something. Thank you. 